Hi, Stephen Caleb from Brownells here, bringing you another episode of Smithbusters. And Caleb has been online again, looking at the forums, and the next thing I know, he says, Steve, we got to do a Smithbusters. So I'm waiting. What's, what's this one? Yeah, so this one is about anti-rotation pins or anti-walk pins versus standard pins in your AR-15 fire control group. Um, before I get into any more details, I'm going to explain what those are for those of you who aren't aware. So your fire control group, your trigger and hammer in your AR-15 is located obviously right here where you see the trigger. And these two pins above are the pins that hold them in. Or if you look at this one here, this one may look a little more familiar because it has standard pins in it uh, located here and right here. All right, so those pins are what hold the hammer and trigger in your fire control group. All right, so the, the whole group in, right? right? So that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about ways to hold that fire control group in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've made that clear. We're talking about... Take a shot every time I say fire control group in this video. Oh, All man, right. they'll never finish the video. <laughs> Go easy on yourself, okay? They're not, not talking about, like, white claws. We're talking about the good stuff. All right. All right. What do we got? So, I, noticing that there's a little bit of controversy on the topic and just typed in anti-rotation pin and Steve. Look, look, look at me. <laughs> look at my look at you're the, telling me there's an anti anti rotation pin crowd there's an an, there's an anti anti rotation pin crowd then there's an anti 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 rotation pin crowd oh, against man. that oh, man. point is there's a lot of videos out there some are very pro anti rotation pin some are very against it okay however I didn't find one video that actually gave like all the facts like mecha like the mechanical knowledge as to why one is better than the other. Oh, shouldn't we just wait for that to come out then before we do this? So that's already out there. <laughs> okay. So it's already a thing. You can look at like the, the original technical documents for the AR-15, like how it was designed, the floating pins that hold in the fire control group. So obviously those are good. That's a design feature, it's not a flaw. Um, but there's been a lot of advancements in AR-15 technology, obviously. And triggers. And triggers. So it that's that's where it gets a little weird. You have a you have a bunch of guys that don't understand the mechanics and they're regurgitating information that they learned but it's in a half truth and out of context. Oh. And that's why we're here. So uh yeah, let's let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk let's about do it. it. Let's let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's actually give you a little bit of information. So first off, I just want to say a lot of this stems from an article published by uh Chad from School of the American Rifle. I just want to say that is a phenomenal article and it's it's full of facts. There's some opinions in there, but for the most part it's facts. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's he's ob obviously the guy knows what he's talking about. We've we've talked with him in the past. He's a he's a cool guy, all right? But people that don't understand the system entirely are reading his article, taking it out of context, regurgitating this information in a way that is out of context and, and false with their own kind of spin on it. For example? For example, uh, there are guys out there saying that regardless of what trigger, what fire control group you're using, anti-rotation pins are just absolutely terrible for your gun. You're an, an idiot if you use them. There was one like YouTube video where the guy was like really angry, like yelling, and it was like, mm. calm down, man. It's just a YouTube video. Uh, but. I'm gonna quit talking about other people's stuff. I'm gonna give you the facts. Let's let's do that right now. So I, I know somebody's gonna post a timestamp like skip to this part for yeah. the video. I was just about to suggest that. Maybe actually. I'll do it. Maybe I'll be the. I'll beat you to it. <laughs> I'll beat you to it. All right. So uh, there are two main types of fire control groups in the AR-15. You have your traditional two-piece, like this one here. This one in particular is actually a Geisley, uh, but this is obviously where the two pieces are indeed mm -hmm. separate. Right. not contained. Then you have what is called a drop-in or cassette type fire control group. A modular trigger. Yeah, like this Wilson Combat right here. All right, so this uh, is one that you would want to use or would be more suited to use a anti-walk or anti-rotation pin. 
Now, I know I'm saying anti-walk or anti-rotation. Those are two different things. So if you look at this firearm right here, the pins are not actually connected. There's no bridge holding them together. These are just anti-walk pins, which means they'll still rotate. They just won't walk. And when I say walk, walk is a lateral movement. That's walking out left or right of the receiver, causing an issue. Now, an anti-rotation pin is something like this right here, where there's a bridge going from the hammer to the trigger pin. And what this does is prevent them from rotating at all. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about when it's okay to use one versus the other. All right. All right, so if you're using this two-piece trigger design here, there are means, like for example, on this, I'll pull this pin out just a little bit. All right, so you can see a groove cut in the pin. That's where the legs from your actual hammer pin are gonna rest and prevent it from walking out. Th these, fire, these fire control groups right here have everything you need to contain the hammer and trigger into the firearm without using anti-walk or anti-rotation right. pins. What does Geisley say about uh, anti-rotation? Geisley highly advises against using them in their oh. triggers. They provide a standard set of pins uh, that they say you need to use. And I have the um, SSA EX Lightning Bow in this one here. And I, these are Geisley pins. I followed Geisley's guidelines because yeah. like, like I said, there's no reason to use anti-walker, anti-rotation pins in that trigger. So the reason they exist or the reason they, they kind of first came out was, um, was for these cassette type drop in fire control groups because they don't they typically they don't have any means to retain standard pins right they right. don't have the springs in them to keep them in uh, some you know some have set screws that you tighten down from the top and it pushes up against the pins to keep them in i don't really like using those um, no people don't like uh turning those screws into their receiver and digging them in. Yeah, you dig them into the receiver, you put extra stress on the pins, and when you use them like that, they can't really rotate anyway because there's so much stress and friction on them. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. that's really not a good way to do it. Even if I use a trigger that does have those set screws, I still use anti-walk or anti-rotation pins like I did here and here. These are both cassette type triggers in these guns. That's why I'm using these pins. If I was using a two-piece trigger in these guns, you would see standard pins. All right, that's the. There is a time and place for anti-walk and anti-rotation pins. I'm, uh, as you can see, obviously I am on both sides of this thing and as bringing always. them together, because there's a time and place for each one. You're not an idiot for using one or the other. All right. Now wait a second. I was reading on the internet the other day that if you use standard pins and they rotate during operation. They're going to wear a hole. They're going to wear that hole out. They're going to waller it out, and pretty soon, before you know it, you turn the gun on its side, and the hammer falls out. Yeah. So tens of, I mean, so like tens of thousands of rounds, you would start seeing some form of wear there, mm -hmm. a measurable wear. There's pin gauges made specifically to measure that, um, and there have been within tens of thousands of rounds, there have been no reports of that happening. The reason that happens is from inexperienced goobers, being polite here, uh, taking their gun apart over and over and over again, pulling them in and out, oh. not uh, maybe using the correct tools and whatnot. That's more of a user-generated problem than a firearm-generated problem. As most problems yeah, are. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. That itself is a myth. Well, he never actually said he saw it happen. No, he just said it could happen. No one ever sees it happen, Steve. No one ever sees it happen. Uh, so yeah, that, that itself is a myth. Uh, you're, if you buy this new Gucci gun or you just paid for, uh, to legally have a registered, you know, machine gun or whatever, mm -hmm. you think you're prolonging the life of it by putting anti-rotation pins in it. Uh, you're not, you're, you're doing absolutely nothing, but maybe causing yourself a future malfunction down the road. Because as you get dirt and grit and stuff in there, Having that one less thing being able to rotate could potentially cause a malfunction. It's going to decrease your lock time. 
um, it's going to cause a lot of issues in a standard two-piece trigger. Now, the reason it doesn't cause issues in a cassette type trigger is because the hammer and the trigger are both sitting on bearings already, or both... Yeah, they're all on a, a bushing, there's a There's a bushing that goes through there, it's sleeved, so you don't have that. You, no, you it won't basically affect, it won't be affected by the pin. Exactly, and if you're using an Elfman like I am right here, that's in a, like a aircraft grade, like sealed bearing, something crazy, so you're not causing any issues there either. These have a faster lock time than anything else. Uh, so I think we just about covered all of it, so... One more thing. Go ahead. What does the military use? The military uses standard pins. There you go. So there you go. Yeah, uh, but they all use standard two-piece triggers. That's my fallback. What oh, what has worked for the last forty well, years? Before we before we leave here, people are going to say the the last question I think is going to be, why even use a cassette type you know full one-piece oh. drop-in trigger? Oh man. Over a standard you know two-piece because Geisley makes a really good trigger um, as far as like if you want a two-stage trigger Geisley's right. the way to go right the key now, the key be there being two-stage if right. you want a crisp single stage trigger if you want a really crisp single stage trigger shortest you know shortest yep. amount of travel possible yep. shortest amount of reset possible you have to use this type of setup the reason is because the hammer and sear engagement can be very controlled by the people manufacturing it because they don't have to rely on you putting your hammer and trigger in somebody's, um, what's the polite word for a not a good lower, Steve? Not a good lower. So for somebody's yeah. not a good lower, they don't have to rely on garbage tolerances between the two pinholes. That's the, that's the key, they can hold the tolerances. They hold the tolerances for the space between the hammer and trigger. So that's why these are superior these cassette types are superior if you want a really light trigger. Right. So a single stage trigger. Single stage trigger, right? So there are two stage triggers out there in these types of setups, but honestly, none of them feel better than the two piece Geisley. So right. uh, but this does not have a place in every scenario. Um, for example, you know, this like shooting competition guns or like tactical competitions, different things like that. I went with the Geisley because I don't want a super light, ultra lightweight trigger that's just not for that purpose. They have a time and place as well. So that's why I think we've answered all the, the whys here. Right. Now, right. does anybody out there that has the wrong pins in their trigger need to take those out right away and throw them away and put the other style in? Uh, you're probably not going to shoot your gun nearly enough to cause any damage or malfunctions. No. Um, this is about optimization, about, you know, yeah, and there, I'll, uh, while we're on the topic, I'll even throw in another scenario before we close here. Uh, there are people say that they switched to anti-walker, anti-rotation pins because their standard pins were breaking. They were snapping them. That's not a pin issue. That's a, that's a firearm issue. Uh, that's a sign that you need to decrease your gas or increase your buffer weight because your bolt's moving way too fast and slapping that hammer way too hard if you're breaking pins. Yeah, and buy uh, better pins too. Yeah, buy better pins. There are some really good pins out there. Uh, your mil spec pins are the, the probably the best pins you can get. Yep. Geisley makes really good pins. Uh, shop at uh, Psyonix, Bravo Company, you know, whatever. Uh, there's Sons a, there's, of Liberty. There's a, yeah, Sons of Liberty. There's a place that will sell you really good pins. What's the name of that company? Um, Brownells. <laughs> Brownells is the name of that company. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll sell you hammer and trigger pins that will work. Great. Well... That's all for today. If you listen carefully, I can hear keyboards all over the country. Oh, man. Tapping comments. I can see, like, keys Please leave flying. us a comment. Tell us where you uh, come down on this uh, issue. We'd like to hear from you because uh, there's been a lot of talk already, and we want to know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we bring you yet another episode of Smithbusters.